I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. The Xenomorph is, as the android Ash says in Alien, a perfect organism, with a structural perfection matched only by its hostility. He adds, I admire its purity, a survivor, unclouded by conscience, remorse, or delusions of morality. The alien is a parasitoid, rather than a technical parasite, because it spends a good portion of its life untethered to a host. It's also an arthropod, similar to a shrimp, with a segmented body, jointed appendages, and a thick, protective exoskeleton. Xenomorph lobsters stew anyone? Yeah, gross. In this video, we'll explore this mysterious creature's biology from head to toe. First, the DNA reflex. The xenomorph develops physical traits similar to its host by studying its cellular makeup. Aliens formed inside humans, for example, burst from the chest and form a bipedal structure, walking on their hind legs like a human would. In Alien 3, we witness the runner alien born from a dog or ox and its quadrupedal. The pred alien, on the other hand, formed inside a yaucha, has yaucha-like characteristics, like mandibles and dreadlocks. Okay, now on to basic senses. According to Alien comics and novelizations, LaSalle Bionational, a fictional research facility, has carried out intricate studies on xenomorph behavior and consciousness. Though xenomorphs don't have humanoid ears, their long heads are equipped with sensitive segments of flesh, which pick up on sound vibrations. Their visual organs are rudimentary, according to human scientists in Alien canon, because xenomorphs don't rely on sight while hunting, although in Alien Covenant, they seem to be using some kind of sonar like bats. Additionally, xenomorphs don't give off body heat, and they typically maintain a temperature similar to their environments. Next up, life cycle. The xenomorph life cycle is a complex process comprising several distinct stages. The creature begins its life as an ovomorph, or egg, laid by a queen, which hatches a parasitoid larval form known as a facehugger, which in turn impregnates a living host with an embryo known as a chestburster. After a gestation period of several hours, or minutes in Alien Covenant, the chestburster erupts violently from the host's chest resulting in the death of the host. The chestburster rapidly matures to an adult phase, usually within a matter of hours, shedding its skin as it grows and replacing its cells with polarized silicon. On to secretions and liquids. Gross. Xenomorph blood is highly acidic, and injuring a xenomorph allows its inner secretions to burn through human flesh and industrial metals. Though the dialogue in Alien calls the blood molecular acid, this phrase is actually a tautology, as all acids are made up of molecules. For decades, fans have theorized what the xenomorph's blood might actually contain. Now on to dorsal fins. Yes, the mysterious dorsal tubes. What do they do? Well, no one knows, but there are theories, as usual. In alien isolation, the alien's dorsal tubes can be seen vibrating from time to time when it stands still and is searching for the player. This may indicate that the tubes are a sensory organ of some kind. Xenomorphs have been seen swimming in sand and water, with dorsal tubes protruding from the surface, not unlike a shark so maybe they're used for breathing or venting to maintain a constant body temperature. Up next, the bladed tail. While this is self-explanatory, xenomorphs have a tail which can be used to stab prey. And how can we forget the infamous inner jaw, which is used by the xenomorph like a piston to usually kill prey, but sometimes to eat as we saw with the runner alien. Okay, now onto social structure. It's implied in the movies that xenomorphs are eusocial, and the queen's behavior in aliens confirms it. Xenomorphs protect the central female creature to ensure the continuation of their species. While the queen being female is technically inaccurate, she's a self-fertilizing hermaphrodite, and all xenomorphs display feminine and masculine traits, according to H.R. Geiger's design. That's what he said. Now let's take a look at predatory tactics. The adult xenomorph is a solitary predator, and usually values the killing of its prey over cooperation with other xenos, though in some cases, the creatures move as a pack. Rather than feed on humans, xenomorphs often incapacitate prey and transport them to the hive to impregnate the still live humans with their young. If a particular human reacts violently or doesn't make a suitable host for the growing young, the xenomorph simply kills that human and moves on. In Alien Evolution, a documentary explaining aliens' creative process, screenwriter Dan O'Bannon confirmed that the aliens' use of humans as living hosts was intended to disturb male viewers. Probably because this is forcibly inserted into the mouth. <laughs> Yeah, it makes sense. So there you have it, a complete guide to alien biology. But I probably missed something. So feel free to blast me in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, consider supporting me on Patreon. And if you want to donate but have no money, follow these steps. First, subscribe. Then, like the video. And then, share it. Twitter, Facebook, whatever. 
This is so useful that it might as well be a $5 donation. If you really want to help, leave a comment too. YouTube loves engagement. Also, please follow me on Twitter. Oh, and make sure you click the bell icon to turn on notifications. I'll see you later.